Bless us, Lord, with vision. May this place be a sacred place where heaven and earth meet. Amen. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, I am deeply grieved even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible to let this cup pass from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. Then he said to Peter, So could you not stay awake with me for one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, he went away for the second time and prayed. My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. Again, he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up. Let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Fear is a natural, powerful and primitive human emotion. It involves a universal biochemical response as well as a high individual remote emotional response. Fear alerts us to the presence of danger or the threat of harm, whether that danger is physical or psychological. We all experience fear in one way or another. Women experiencing domestic abuse fear their partner, but are also afraid of the unknown and what will happen if they leave. For people with a diagnosis of a medical condition, there's a fear of pain, or indeed whether the cure will be worse than the disease, or whether they will survive at all. For those who are about to embark on something new and unknown, well, something might go wrong. I can remember standing on the edge of the three metre diving board, that's the high one, as a child, as my toes curled round the edge of the board, gripping tightly, the water looked a long way down there. I was terrified. The last two years of COVID have been a fearful time for many of us. And there are many people still shielding today because they worry about catching it. They fear the pain. They fear the consequences. They fear death. I cannot imagine what the people of Ukraine are going through right now. I have no words for the horror of what is happening there. But fear, fear must be stalking that land like nothing else. Jesus was deeply grieved, even to death. He was afraid. He knew what was to come. See, the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. He was right to be afraid, very afraid. And we know that it did all happen. Things went very wrong for Jesus. as they have gone wrong for those experiencing the horrors of war in Ukraine, those suffering the many losses of the last two years of COVID.
close your eyes and imagine the scene there in the garden. It's night time. How dark is it? How much can you actually see? What are your surroundings like? Are there trees? If you can see trees, what do they look like? Is the garden hilly or flat? How hot is it? Can you feel the heat of the day still? Or is there a cooling breeze? Feel it against your skin. sounds can you hear? Maybe there's a rustle of wind in leaves. Perhaps there's a, a sound of a cricket. Maybe even the snoring of a disciple. Place yourself in that garden. If you look ahead, there you can see Jesus. Approach Jesus. What would you say to him there in the garden if you could speak? What do you think Jesus is saying to you? there in the garden. Turn round now and look for the disciples. Are they awake now or still sleeping? As you approach them, think what you'd like to say to them. Now listen out for a crowd of people approaching. Hear them. What sort of noise are they making? They're carrying torches and, and making lots of noise. And at their head is Judas, Jesus' disciple, Jesus' friend. Betrayal. Relationships are important. They're important in that they provide mutual support and promote emotional well-being. Our lives are defined by our relationships at all different levels. 
they involve intimacy, trust and goodwill. When that trust is broken, in small ways or big, nothing can be the same again. When someone lies to us, we're less likely to believe them. It can be difficult to repair a marriage when someone has cheated. We're all weary of clicking on a link or picking up a phone call with an unknown number because too many of us have fallen victims to scams. And when trust is broken, it hurts relationships. Eating together is an important part of being in relationship. We eat together as families. We go to restaurants with friends. It's a way of sharing something of ourselves. In sharing food, breaking bread together, we are sharing something which is essential for life. And at the Last Supper, Jesus ate with his disciples. On the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus saying, Where do you want us to make preparations for you to eat the Passover? He said, Go into the city to a certain man and say to him, The teacher says, My, name, my time is clear, near. I will keep the Passover at your hand with my dis house with my disciples. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he took his place with the twelve. And while they were eating, he said, Truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me. And they became greatly distressed and began to say to him one after the other, Surely not I, Lord. He answered, the one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes as it is written of him. But woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. Judas, who betrayed him, said, Surely not I, Rabbi. He replied, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup and after giving thanks, he gave it to them saying, Drink from it, all of you. For this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will never again drink of this fruit of the vine, until that day when I drink it new with you in my father's kingdom. There is real intimacy here. Jesus giving his body, his blood. Judas dipping his hand into the same bowl as Jesus. This is intimacy of people in relationship. It's a relationship of trust. But then it happened, just as Jesus said it would happen. That trust was broken. He was betrayed and betrayed by one of those closest to him. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived and with him was a large crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign saying, the one I will kiss is the man, arrest him. At once he came up to Jesus and said, greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus said to him, friend, do what you are here to do. Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. Suddenly one of those with Jesus put his hand on his sword, drew it, and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot appeal to my father, and he will at once send more than twelve legions of angels? 
But that, but how then would the scriptures be fulfilled, which say it must happen in this way? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day I sat in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But all this is taking place so that the scriptures of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled. Judas kissed Jesus. A simple kiss evokes emotions of love, care and admiration. It's an intimate act of love that, that can be overwhelming. A kiss is a greeting, an intimate act, a universal sign of being connected. But this kiss was a sign that the bonds of friendship, trust and relationship had been broken. Judas betrayed Jesus and Jesus was taken by the authorities. And we know what happened next. In building relationships, we are building trust. The sort of trust that makes us feel safe and when that trust is violated, that safety is gone. It is as if we don't know who or what to believe. When we are betrayed, something bad can and often does happen to us. There's a second betrayal here. Jesus said to Peter and his disciples, I am deeply grieved even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. Not once, but three times. Looking out for one, one another is another sign of relationship. And Jesus asked Peter and the two sons of Zebedee to come with him into the garden of Gethsemane. But when push came to shove, they simply weren't up to it. They fled, ran away, legged it. Acceptance. The history of the Christian church is littered with martyrs, people who accepted God as their saviour and who were willing to die for their beliefs. The first of these was Stephen, a deacon. His story is told in the Acts of the Apostles. Stephen, full of grace and power, did great wonders and signs among the people. Then some of those who belonged to the synagogue, synagogue of the freedmen, as it was called, Cyrenians, Alexandrians, and others of those from Cilicia and Asia, stood up and argued with Stephen. But they could not withstand the wisdom and the spirit with which he spoke. Then they secretly instigated some men to say, We have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and God. They stirred up the people as well as the elders and the scribes. Then they suddenly confronted him, seized him and brought him before the council. They set up false witnesses who said, This man never stops saying things against this holy place and the law. For we have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth will destroy this place and will change the customs that Moses handed on to us. And all who sat at the council looked intently at him. And they saw that his face was like the face of an angel. Well, after this, Stephen talked to the council, argued with them, and it went on for quite a while. But then when they heard all of these things, they became enra enraged and ground their teeth at Stephen. But filled with the Holy Spirit, he gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, 
I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they covered their ears and with a loud shout all rushed together against him. Then they dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. And the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning Stephen, he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he died. Since the martyrdom of Stephen, whose words, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit, and Lord, do not hold this sin against them, echo Jesus' own words from the cross, there have been many, many other people who have accepted the will of God and died for their faith. And we, while we often think of martyrs as figures from the past, St Lawrence, for example, St Catherine, St Sebastian, St Lucy, many, many others. The last hundred years or so have seen more people persecuted for their faith than in any other century. If you look at the front of Westminster Abbey, you'll see some statues in the niches above the west door. These aren't medieval statues, they've only been there since the late 1990s. And they are statues of martyrs of the 20th century. So you have Maximilian in Kolbe, who died in Auschwitz, having offered his own life to save a fellow prisoner. Manche Mesamola lived in Transvaal in South Africa. She was killed by her parents at the age of 15 because they disapproved of her becoming a Christian. Archbishop Jinani Luwum was an evangelist who became Archbishop of Uganda. He was killed by Idi Amin for protesting about violence on the part of Amin's security forces. The Grand Duchess Elizabeth was married to one of the, sars, one of the sons of Tsar Alexander II of Russia. After his death, she sold, she sold her possessions, began a religious order and worked for the poor. She was murdered by the Bolsheviks by being thrown down a mine shaft. Martin Luther King was a campaigner for civil rights in the USA. After a march on Washington, Congress passed a Civil Rights Act. He was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize, but was shot dead, shot dead in Memphis on 4th of April 1968. Oscar Romero was Archbishop of San Salvador. He committed himself to the poor and the persecuted and became the catalyst for radical moral prophecy. His church began to document human rights abuse. He was shot dead while celebrating mass in the chapel of the hospital where he lived. Dietrich Bonhoeffer was a Lutheran pastor who believed that true discipleship demanded political resistance against the Nazi state. He was arrested in 1943 and executed only a few days before the end of the Second World War. Esther John, was born Kamar Zia, one of seven children who moved to Pakistan at the petition of India. She converted to Christianity and ran away to her from home to avoid a forced marriage. While working in a mission hospital, she was brutally murdered in her bed at the age of 30. Lucien Tapidi was a teacher and evangelist in Papua New Guinea. When the Japanese invaded in 1941, he was determined not to abandon the missionaries he was working with. But Tapidi was murdered with an axe. His killer later converted to Christianity and built a church dedicated to the memory of his victim. Wang Ziming was a pastor in the church in China. During the Cultural Revolution, churches were closed, but Christians continued to meet in secret. He was arrested imprisoned 
and executed for his faith. All of these people knew that their lives were at risk. But in accepting that risk, they demonstrated that they trusted in God. They accepted their fate knowing it was the will of God. In many countries today, people live under pressure for their faith. According to the International Society for Human Rights, which is actually a secular organisation, 80% of all acts of religious discrimination today are perpetrated against Christians. The Centre for the Study of Global Christianity in the United States estimates that 100,000 Christians now die every year targeted because of their faith. That's 11 for every hour. It is clear that Jesus knew what lay ahead, but was prepared to do the will of his Father and accept what was coming. Do you think that I cannot appeal to my Father, and he will at once send more than twelve legions of angels? And like the phoenix, that bird of legend which rises out of the fire, or the green shoots which come from the seeds which are remnants of last summer's bounty, new life springs from death and reminds us that the resurrection is just around the corner. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. And this is why Jesus didn't appeal to his father, ask him to send legions of angels to come to the rescue. Jesus, knowing what lay ahead, endured the anger, agony in the garden, forgave his friends who deserted him and Judas who betrayed him. He was willing to die so that we might have life. Your will be done. Holy God, allow more and more thoughts of your thinking to come into our hearts day by day, till there shall at last be an open road between you and us, and your angels may go up and down among us, so that we may be in your heaven, even while we are upon your earth. Amen.